I think people who are term limited might be forgiven for actually coasting in their, their last year, but I think you want to run through the finish line. This job has changed me. I'm seven years older now than I was when I started this job. I have three grandchildren I didn't have before. Francis and I are in our 47th year of marriage, and I am more of a advocate for democracy now than I even was, and I was a big fan before I got here. It's the, the, the give and take, the frictions, the, the, the annoying uh, disagreements that, that uh, are so much a part of, of democracy. That's what makes us stronger. Each budget address has, I think, sort of reflected the, the tenor of, of where we were financially. Uh, we, we were in rotten financial shape in my first couple of years. So I, I put out a budget that said, let's fix this. All things are possible. And it was a little more ambitious than apparently the General Assembly wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't go along with. Then we started working together, a pension system. Then we worked together on liquor. We worked together on legalizing medical marijuana. And by the time we got to the second budget, uh, we could actually start moving toward compromise. I, I, I do a lousy job in terms of touting the things that have been done, but, but you know, thinking about it, we really have done a lot. We've done criminal justice reform, the expansion of Medicaid. I mean, we have the lowest uninsured rate in Pennsylvania history, $1.9 billion into public education. 11,000 fewer prisoners in our prisons. Pennsylvania was the first state to have a GI Bill. We have the first farm bill joining the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative. And we have almost $3 billion in the rainy day fund. I'm proud to be the first governor in four decades to hand over a budget surplus to my successor. Because of the surplus, we, we can actually do something we have never been able to do in, in my seven years, and that is to say, you know what? We can pay our bills and we don't have to raise anybody's taxes. In fact, we can re reduce the corporate income tax. The, the question, I guess, is, is what do we do with this surplus? And uh, the last thing you want to do is fritter it away. I think of that family down the street or down the road, and they're trying to make ends meet, and they're trying to pay the car bill, they're trying to pay their insurance bill, they're trying to pay the mortgage or the rent, and then you know one of their children ends up needing braces, and they got to pay for that. I'm trying to think of, of that family. What, what is it that we can do at the state level? The first thing is education. That's transformational. I'm not sure there's anything that's more important for a state than education. When we stiff education, we're basically just saying, well, we're gonna, you know, we're stiffing ourselves. We're, we're cheating ourselves out of our future. The other two things, the minimum wage and, and the corporate and income tax are basically saying, if we do a good job in preparing you for a career in this complicated and ever-changing world that, that we live in, then we need you to have opportunities. I'd like to make this a place that people want to come and learn and then stay. I, I'm not really loading this budget up with a whole lot of ancillary things. They're just a few things. And it's basically, come on, we've done so many different good things together. Here are a few things that, that remain to be done. Let's get them done bring them across the finish line. Let's finish the job. And by the way, in the process, let's show the world that democracy actually works.